السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وما قل وكفى خير مما كثر وألها وإنما توعدون لآت وما أنتم بمعجزين عباد الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله اتقوا الله فإنكم ملاقوه فإنكم ملاقوه في يوم لا بيع فيه ولا خلة ولا شفاعة والكافرون هم الظالمون أسأل الله أن يثبتنا في ذاك اليوم We start by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the best of peace and blessings upon the best and most noble of prophets and messengers Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam and we send the peace and blessings to his companions and those who continue to follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us from amongst them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters in Islam, first, I remind ourselves to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he should be feared and revered him, and revere him the way he should be revered and to remember that we will be gathered in front of Allah with our actions on a day where nothing will benefit them but what they did in this world and the mercy of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and our souls, our families and our friends and gather us in Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers and sisters in Islam, in the times we live in, Materialism is very prevalent. People become 
are becoming more and more superficial, more and more judgmental, more and more arrogant, and less and less humble. It is because of the culture we sur- we're surrounded with. It is not by choice, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed for us to be around this. So we must deal with it. And we must always remember that this and everything we experience in our life in any matter is a test from Allah. Whether it's good or it's bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna." And we test you with good and with bad as a fitna. Good can be a fitna. Ease can be a fitna. Wealth can be a fitna. Health can be a fitna. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see if you will be patient enough to remember him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his blessings upon you, or when or if you will be patient enough to fear him and to be connected with him subhanahu wa ta'ala if he takes this rahmah, this, this uh, ni'mah away from you. Any ni'mah, any blessing he bestowed upon you subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is this culture, brothers and sisters in Islam, made us more and more judgmental of others to a point where a person is judged for their color, for their background, for the way they dress, for the size of their beard, for their haircut, for the, for the people they stay around, the car they drive. And this is how superficial we have become because of this culture that surrounds us, ya akhwan. But we must never forget the hadith, the guidance of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The guidance of Muhammad taught us to be humble in everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ When we look at others, we should only judge them based on the taqwa and the fear that they have where? In their hearts. And do we know what's in anyone else's heart? No, absolutely not. Only Allah knows what's in the heart. Therefore, we cannot judge anyone. But we can judge ourselves because we can look at what's in our heart. Whether we're honest, we're trustworthy, we're truthful with ourselves, we're God-fearing when we're by ourselves. This is something we can only provide the antidote for. It is a sickness that we can provide the only medicine for, ya ikhwan. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an example of humbleness in his life. An example of humbleness in every single interaction he had with anyone around him. Alayhi salatu was salam. He never judged anyone. He was the humblest of men. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so humble, he will not be known sitting amongst the gathering of the companions. Because he would dress the same, talk the same, look the same, act the same as his companions, alayhi salatu was salam. When, you, when anyone walked in, they wouldn't know who he was. When he walked on the street, he was humble, alayhi salatu was salam. They said it was narrated that a little girl would be able to take him away from the companions as he was planning. The Prophet sallallahu was the leader of the ummah. He was be, be busy being the example for mankind until the day of judgment. But this didn't prevent him from, from a little girl taking his hand in the street and saying, Ya Rasulullah, can you help me? There's something stuck on top of the house. I want you to jump over and get it for me. That's how humble he was, alayhi salatu was salam. And I don't want you to think of the Prophet Sallallahu humbleness. I want you to think of the girl and the way she perceived him. She wasn't even scared of the Prophet Sallallahu enough to say, no, no, he's Rasulullah, how am I going to do this? No. He was approachable by everyone, alayhi salatu was salam. Everyone around him thought he was there, that they were his best friend. 
and they were his core of friendship. In the hadith, uh, in the Athar of Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, who's the most beloved of men to you? He said, Abu Bakr. And then he said, oh, first he said, Aisha. He said, no, of the men, Ya Rasulullah. He said, her father. He said, then after that, and he said, Umar. After that, Uthman, then he stopped. He's like, oh, it doesn't look like I'm anywhere in this list. But the fact that he believed and he thought that he was the closest of the companions to the Prophet ﷺ shows us how humble he was alayhi salatu wasalam. And what I wanted to elude to with this introduction, brothers and sisters, is that the Prophet ﷺ never judged anyone for the way they look. On the contrary, the Prophet ﷺ liked the fuqara and the masakeen, the poor and the needy more than anyone in society. And he would feel with them more than anyone in society to the point where the Prophet ﷺ said, Allahumma ahyini miskinan. O oh Allah, let me live with the poor. Watawathani miskinan. And let me die with the poor. وَحْشُرْنِي فِي زُمْرَةِ الْمَسَاكِينَ And I want to be resurrected on the day of judgment and entered into Jannah with who? This is Muhammad Wasallam With the poor. With the poor. The Prophet Wasallam said in another hadith, يَدْخُلْ الْجَنَّةِ كُلَّ ضَعِيفٍ مُتَضَعِفٍ The ones who enter Jannah are every weak person. And if they are not weak, then what? They act weak. They act weak. Not weak as in humiliate themselves in front of others, but weak so that they aren't noticed or people don't sense that they're arrogant and full of pride when they're around them. They sense the humbleness when they're around them. يَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ كُلَّ هَيِّنٍ لَيِّنٍ A person who is humble and easygoing. These are the people of Jannah as our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam informed us. Say Alayhi Salatu Wasalam. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bestow His Barakah upon us in this blessed gathering. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ikhwani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a famous story in his seerah. And this story, I want everyone to open their eyes, their ears, hearts and minds with it. Because this story truly humbled me and made me understand how much the Prophet ﷺ liked the weak. One day he ﷺ was sitting in a gathering. With who? With the Sahaba, the Muhajireen, the Ansar, the nobles of the Muslimin, As-Sabiqoon Al-Awwaloon, the ones who believed in him from the beginning, the ones who aided and supported him when he did hijrah. These sahaba were sitting around him. The Prophet ﷺ was sitting between them and he saw a man walk in the door. This man, his name was Julaybib. And what do you know about Julaybib? What do you know about Julaybib? Julaybib, brothers and sisters, was a short not so good looking man. He wasn't attractive in his appearance. Julaybib wore a garment that was raggedy and patched. Julaybib didn't find anything nice to eat all the time. Perhaps he ate dry bread, dry hard dates. He drank water that wasn't so clean. When he slept, he slept on a pillow in the corner of the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With the sky above him, there was no ceiling above him. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda. Julaybib was not known by many of the Sahaba. In this gathering, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know who this man is? They said, No. Who is he? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Innahu Julaybib. This is Julaybib. This is Julaybib. How do you not know him? Then the Prophet ﷺ told Julaybib, Ya Julaybib, ala tatazawaj. Oh Julaybib, this man was poor. He didn't look so good. The way he looked, his appearance wasn't attractive to the opposite gender or to anyone. People did not know him. That's how low his status was. 
But the status عند Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what counts. The Prophet ﷺ told him, Ya Julaybib, ala tatazawwaj? He said, Ya Rasulullah, kayfa atazawwaj? Wala mala wala jah. Ya Rasulullah, how should I get married? And I do not have wealth, la mal, wala jah. I do not have status. Then he walked out. The next day, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting, he saw Julaybib again. He said, Ya Julaybib, ala tatazawwaj? Oh Julaybib, don't you get married? Won't you get married? He said, Ya Rasulullah, kayfa atazawwaj wala mala wala jah? How can I get married when I have no status and wealth? The third day, the Prophet sallallahu saw him again. He said, Ya Julaybib, ala tatazawwaj? Won't you get married? He's like, Ya Rasulullah, didn't I tell you? How will I get married? Wala mal, wala jah. There's no status, there's no wealth. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Go to the house of Fulan al-Ansari. He has a daughter. Go and ask her for her hand. And tell them, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent him, sent me to you. So this man, Julaybib, radiallahu ta'ala anhu arda, walks to this man's house. He knocks on the door. The father opens. The father looks at Julaybib up and down. And he's thinking, what could this man want? The last thing to cross his mind was that his daughter would be married to this man. Because this woman, his daughter, was approached by the nobles of the Ansar and they were rejected. She was the most beautiful and she had very high status in Medina at that time. They rejected some noble, wealthy Ansar. But... This didn't prevent the Prophet ﷺ from sending Julaybib to them. So when he entered, he said, لَقَدْ بَعَثَنِي رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَخْطُبْ ابنتك. That the Rasul ﷺ sent me to ask for your daughter's hand in marriage. He looked at Julaybib and perhaps couldn't believe what he heard. He asked his wife, he told her, do you believe what this man is saying? And couldn't, she couldn't believe it either. They said, no. How will we marry you when you have nothing? And then Fatat al-Aqeedah, the Mu'mina, al-Sadiqah, the, the one, the woman who is a believing, pious, righteous woman in the other room next door when she heard this man was sent by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this woman was raised in the school of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and carried the iman that was planted in her heart by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she heard this and she said kalla wallah no by Allah I will never reject anyone who was sent by Rasulullah I agree to marry this man and she told her father and mother that she agrees to marry this man. Allahu Akbar. So her father and mother couldn't say anything. They got married. A beautiful night. A walima of what? A mahr of what? He had one old metal ring to offer her as mahr. His walima, perhaps he fed people bread and water. But that is not what matters. What matters is that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him. And he called him al-hib, my love. They got married. And on the, the perhaps most beautiful day in the life of a man and a woman, the first day of marriage, they go home. And he cannot believe that he is married to the most beautiful woman amongst the Ansar. Not in his wildest dreams did he think he will be married to her. On this most blessed day, when he goes inside his house, what does he hear? He hears the call to defend al Madina al Munawwara as it was being attacked by people from outside. They said, Ya Khaylullah Hirkabi, O horses of Allah, ride. And he went to defend al Madina and left his wife before even touching her for the call of Allah to defend himself and his city. And when he went, and when he went, 
he defended and after that mawqa that battle was over the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was searching around and asked the sahaba who died today defending al madina and they counted all of the names and he didn't hear Julaybib and he didn't see Julaybib he said ayn al hib where is my love where is Julaybib they said who is Julaybib he said Julaybib perhaps they remembered him oh that man yeah, he got married recently they went the prophet sallallahu went left the sahaba left everyone who was dead and martyred at that day and he went and found Julaybib with dirt all over his face with blood all over his body and garments and there were six men around him the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam took him left everyone took him cleaned his face alayhi salatu wasalam he cleaned his face he put his head on his blessed thigh alayhi salatu wasalam and he cleaned it with his own garment and he said habibi julaybib my love julaybib he said you died defending and you did and you did anta minni wa ana mink i am from you and you are from me anta minni wa ana mink i am from you and you are from me anta minni wa ana mink i am from you and you are from me look at the status of julaybib this person that perhaps no one knew sat in the corner of the masjid slept there he slept in the masjid but no sahabi knew him but that didn't matter what matters is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew him from above seven heavens and what matters is rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left all of the sahaba with status and he went to him and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ashaha bi wajhi he turned his face to the side and he asked the sahaba do you know why i turned my face they said why he said because i saw al hur al ain fighting for him and i know that he's a jealous man and he wouldn't want anyone to look at his hur so i turned my face this is the status of julaybib ya ikhwan the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said rubba ash'atha aghbar dhi tamrain madfu'un min al abwab لو اقسم على الله لا ابره لو اقسم على الله لا ابره perhaps a person who is dirty raggedy in his clothes shuffled disheveled can't afford anything better his hair picked out he comes to the masjid unnoticed مدفوع من الابواب if he comes to your door you look at him yes what do you want why are you here in my house yeah yeah i i know you but what do you want yes madfu' min al abwa law aqsama ala allah la abarra there's a secret between him and allah so that if he asks allah anything allah will answer ala inna awliya allah la khawfun alayhim wala hum yahzanun the people who are chosen by allah there is no fear for them and they will never be sad because what makes them happy is their connection to Allah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us to be around them and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to assisting them and never turning our backs to them amin ya rabbil alamin aqulu ma sami'tum wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون اتقوا الله اتقوا الله حق التقوى اتقوا الله فإنكم ملاقوه اتقوا الله واخشوه Fear Allah, brothers and sisters in Islam. Fear Allah in yourselves. Fear Allah in your dealings with others. Fear Allah in the way you look at others. Fear Allah in every action, every eye movement, every facial gesture, every every walk, everything 
that can give anyone the wrong impression, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he is watching you and judging you. Be humble. Be humble with these people as we don't know who we are talking to. We don't know how near they are to Allah. We don't know how important their dua is and how answered it is to Allah. It was narrated in, the, in one of the stories by one of the Salaf al-Salih. His name was Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir. And he was a great scholar from Tabi'i Tabi'in. He was sitting in al-Masjid al-Nabawi, the Masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day. And as he was sitting, he noticed a man making dua. And this was after months and months of making dua for rain. They prayed istisqa perhaps every day. But they were never rained. They prayed next to the grave of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the most beloved cities to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The city that has twice as much barakah than Mecca. They were making istisqa, asking Allah for, for rain. And they weren't rained at all. So just imagine. Just imagine. The state these people were in, Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir was there and he saw a man in the corner of the masjid by himself. This man was raggedy, raggedy old, he wasn't dressed, but he was making dua. So Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, being a scholar and a righteous man that he was, he knew that this man perhaps has a secret between him and Allah. So he went and sat behind him so he can hear what he is saying. This man was making dua and he said at the end of his dua, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, bestow your mercy upon us. Oh Allah, make it rain upon us. Oh Allah, the people of Medina have been, have been asking you for rain and you did not give it to them. Oh Allah, for my sake, give them rain. Oh Allah, for my sake, aqsamtu alayka and tusqiyahum. For my sake, give them rain, ya Allah. And Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir, who is narrating this story, he said, Wallah, by the time he dropped his hands in dua, we saw the clouds gather and the rain beginning to come down. The rain began to come down. This man who no one cared about, no one knew about, but this scholar Muhammad ibn al-Munkadir knew a whole lot about because Allah taught him from his knowledge. And he knew that the way a person dresses or how he is respected by others, the size of his house, house, the beauty of the vehicle he drives means nothing. Because the scale and the law is something completely different. The scale and the law is something completely different. Brothers and sisters, I studied Quran with many shuyukh. My first sheikh, his name was Sheikh Hafiz al-Karachi. And he was from Karachi. This Sheikh, Wallah, if I ever met a wali in my life, it'll be this man. If I ever met one of these chosen people, it's this man. Rahmatullah he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested him. He was very short. He had a long white beard. And Allah tested him with a sickness. He had big bulges all over his body. Perhaps some children would be scared or disgusted to shake his hand. But this man did not open a mushaf for 40 years because the Qur'an was so solid in his heart he would just do a khitmah going back and forth in the masjid between Fajr and Dhuhr. This man, Wallah, I never entered his, I entered his house one time to visit. And that one time, we waited for him 20 minutes outside. His wife said, wait and wait. We said, you know, been waiting. What's wrong with the sheikh? Is he okay? We entered his house. We entered his house and he was in sujood. And his wife said, he's been that way since, since you came. This man would only speak with Quran. He was so humble and I was just starting to practice. And he made me love the Quran. So much so that I continued to memorize even after him. Rahmatullah alayhi. When I first started to practice, I learned the hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa forbade us from sitting a certain way. And in this hadith, I learned it very new. 
I just had learned it and I went to the Shaykh and I told him, Shaykh, you see the way you're sitting? I read a hadith that says you cannot sit this way. I was young. I was 19. This is the Shaykh Hafiz. Everyone knows him. Res- respected by all of the, the scholars and the Hafiz in the area. The Shaykh broke down in tears and he started weeping. He was about 80 years old. He was weeping. And I calmed him down. I told him, Shaykh, why are you weeping? I just told you a hadith. He said, how? I don't understand how I lived my life not knowing this hadith. How did I live my life not knowing this? This is how humble the Shaykh was. These awliya, ya akhwan, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us by being around them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them. We ask Allah to make us around them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us understand how to deal with them. Give us the humbleness, ya Allah. Ya Allah, bless us with humbleness. Ya Allah, bless us with humbleness, with knowledge, with taqwa, with khashya. Make us God-fearing. Make our families God-fearing. Make our communities God-fearing. Oh Allah, make us true believers and give us righteousness to fear you when we are by ourselves. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the ummah victory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give the ummah glory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help the ummah all over the world in all of the trials and tribulations that are befalling them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of aid and assistance to them. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu ma sami'tum. Wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Wa ita idha al qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghi. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkaroon. Ithkuru Allah al azim yadhkurkum. Wa ashkuruhu ala ni'amihi yazidkum. Wa la dhikru Allah akbar. Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamuna wa aqim as salah. الله أكبر الله أكبر شر لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة يا الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استوى Make sure your rose is straight and tight, brothers and sisters. Allah <laughs> Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين تبارك الذي جعل في السماء بروجا وجعل فيها سراجا وقمرا منيرا وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وعباد الرحمن وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا 
وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخروا لم يخروا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاؤكم فقد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر سبحان 
روح قدوس الله أكبر تحيات لله ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام علينا شهد أن لا إله إلا الله شهد الله مصر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الله أكبر استغفر الله Assalamu alaikum. On behalf of the Election Commission for 2019, I have a quick announcement to make. So for the elections for board of EPIC 2019, we have encountered some technical and logistical challenges. That's why we have to move the election date by one week. So instead of January 12, 2020, we will be having the election on January 19, 2020. Because we also have a conflict with uh, the EPIC fundraiser, which is on January 11th. So we want to have maximum uh, participation. That's why this has been taken into account. Being that said, the final list of the candidates will be posted by December 20th, which is the next Friday, inshallah. And uh, the community will be notified via email and also you know, through announcement on, and also on the notice board. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum.